Okay, another reason for the emergence of globalisation has purely and simply been advances in technology, transport and ICT. So what I mean by that is basic, most of these things, you know, I'm sure you're more than aware of, but things like um, the computer chip being invented in 1971, use of the internet in the 90s, so the internet allowed for instant messaging, it allowed for video calls so people could um, t communicate you know, in different countries a lot more easily. It allowed for cheap phone calls so companies could relocate to other industries. They could operate call centers in other countries. So it was cheap for call centers to ring you from you know, um, third world countries so that um, they could save on labor costs. Uh, and that allowed the businesses to communicate more effectively. So internet and cheap phone calls has had a massive impact on the emergence of globalization. Electronic funds transfers, so allowing money to be sent around the world, causing the development of international financial system. So it's allowing people to you know, withdraw money in foreign countries has made it a lot easier. E-commerce, so things can be sold over the internet. I'm sure you've all you know, been on eBay and Amazon and things like that, which have allowed shopping online. And also the use of super tankers, so big ships that have allowed um, large-scale trade between countries has also helped. And GPS navigation, which has made it easy to transport goods and services um, because you've had that opportunity to you know, know where you're going, basically. Deregulation of key markets is the hardest one. Okay, and this is the one that I really want you to get your head around and be able to explain really articulately. And basically, deregulation is about removing any forms of government controls from the market to allow for freer trade. So the idea is that the less internet intervention there is from the government, the more dynamic and competitive the market is, and that can allow for increased competition and lower prices for consumers. So deregulation is the process of removing government controls from the market to allow for a more dynamic, competitive environment and includes things like reducing minimum wages, getting rid of tariffs, getting rid of currency controls, so allowing for floating exchange rates. Um, basically, these are the four main types of deregulation. You've got selling off government-owned monopolies, so rather than things like you know, Telstra being owned by the government, allowing for increased competition, not only domestically, but in terms of foreign competition. Removing barriers to trade, like tariffs is a form of deregulation. There's labour market deregulation. So labour market deregulation involves getting rid of restrictions from the government in terms of things like, um, you know, the government setting wages in industries, so allowing businesses to set their wages based on productivity, trying to remove things like minimum wages and unfair dismissal laws. Um, allowing foreign firms to invest in the Australian economy is another form of deregulation. So allowing foreign banks to be involved in Australia, allowing the establishment of multinational corporations. So I'm just going to go through some of the sort of the main areas of deregulation. So first of all, there's deregulation on products. So that can involve removing tariffs and taxes and different barriers to entry to trade. Um, to stop sort of the idea of monopolies and oligopolies from forming and privatising businesses so there's less government regulation. So, for example, for the telecom, um, had a monopoly in telecommunications. Now the market has lots and lots of both um, local and multinational firms like Virgin and Vodafone that all operate in the telecommunications sector. That's a form of deregulation. That's about trying to open up that market to free trade and it's a good example that you can clearly use because it's something you all know of and something you all use as a form of deregulation. Um, foreign firms can now invest in Australian companies. So another form of deregulation is allowing um, for you know, direct investment from foreign firms to allow it for our Australian companies to grow and get bigger and so on and so forth. People can take out loans with international banks, so we've got more, there's more competition for funds in the banking sector as well, which can lead to lower interest rates. So that's deregulation of the product market. Then we have deregulation of the labour market. And again, that's about making sure that wages are tied to productivity in order to boost firms' willingness to be efficient and try and achieve the most efficient labour force we possibly can achieve. So it includes linking wages to productivity rather than the government setting wages, trying to remove unfair dismissal laws, trying to remove minimum wages, all of these kind of things that try and encourage um, more efficiency in the labour market. It also involves re reducing um, labour laws in, result in refer reference to using foreign labour, so allowing for those to work in Australia on 457 visas, so overseas immigration into the, um, the labour market to make it more competition for jobs as well. So deregulation of the product market, deregulation of the labour market, 
deregulation of financial markets. So again, this is about trying to change the laws about how financial institutions operate. So allowing for there to be more competition in terms of um, banks, but also for allowing for more foreign and direct and portfolio investment. So allowing there for more capital inflow coming into Australia, more money coming in for businesses to expand. Um, it also includes like countries using the same currency so that there can be freer trade. So the Eurozone becoming one big country with it all uses a similar currency is a form of deregulation of global financial markets. Deregulating the banking sector so allow foreign companies to compete. All of these things are about deregulation of financial markets. And then you've also got things like um, export processing zones or special economic zones. So that idea of allowing foreign companies to come in, but not only allowing them, but promoting that foreign investment through things like allowing them to have lower tax rates. So like Apple allowed, sorry, Ireland allowed Apple to have lower tax rates. We may allow them to come here and um, reduce wages so that they can hire people under minimum wage, that they don't have to pay certain things that other companies have to pay for. Um, reducing environmental regulations on that company would be another example of these special economic zones. So basically deregulation is about trying to improve international competitiveness by opening up our markets to more competition. It includes opening up the financial market, it includes getting rid of government restrictions on tariffs and taxes on goods, it involves opening up our labour markets to make them more competitive. So these are the key things that are associated with deregulation. You've got labour markets, which is about getting rid of the role of unions, getting rid of the role of government in setting wages and linking them to productivity. Trying to get rid of ways that people can be unproductive and establishing ways that businesses can try and have a more productive labour force. In terms of financial markets, allowing money to flow around the world, allowing for multinational companies to operate in different countries, allowing foreign banks to compete against Australian banks so people can get access to cheaper interest rates. And you've got other forms of deregulation which involves things like um, reducing the power of monopolies and increasing competition in different sectors like Telstra and Qantas, um, removing barriers to entry like tariffs, and reducing sort of government regulations and things like that as well. All of these are forms of deregulation.